What is Europe på söndag med Börje Dahlqvist. Vad gör Sverige i unionen? Och om vad man gör i Sydamerika ska det handla nu. Pintino är 16 år. Han bor i Brasilien och har en plats i fotbollsklubben Flamingos juniorlag. Hans dröm är att en dag få bli en av klubbens stora stjärnor. America, Turning 16 focuses its cameras on Brazil and on teenagers and sports. How important are sports for today's youth? Ah, o esporte tem muito, muita importância para o futuro, né? Porque de repente no futuro pode ser uma profissão boa aí, tem tudo a ver. É, eu tenho uma paixão muito grande de futebol. Onde eu vou, eu quero estar sempre jogando futebol. Até nas ruas, eu futebol. Tá no sonho. Pinchino da Silva is a soccer player. He lives in Brazil and he's 16 years old. This is his story. Pinchino puts on the red and black uniform of the Flamingo Soccer Club and gets ready to play the game that Brazilians passionately call futebol. The Flamingo is one of Brazil's most popular soccer teams and Pinchino has been playing with the club for the past five years. Every year, the Flamingo spends close to a million dollars recruiting and developing new talent. Their goal is to prepare young players for a professional career. Pinchino was recruited by the Flamingo when he was 11, and like most of his teammates, he's risen through the ranks of the club. Right now, Pinchino is playing at the juvenile level. In two years, he could be playing with the Flamingo's professional team. I'm always motivated when I'm playing soccer. 
Just wearing the red and black uniform of the Flamingo gets me pumped up and gives me the courage to carry on. Ever since I joined the Flamingo, I've become more responsible and I think more about the future. If I make it one day as a professional soccer player, I'll be able to help my mom financially and provide better living conditions for my family. Soccer is big business in Brazil, and the minimum salary of a professional player is $60,000. That's 30 times higher than the average worker. The best players earn over $1 million a year. Most of the Flamingos players come from the middle class and are drawn to the sport because of the money. Pinchino is one of the few kids on his team who comes from the slums. I remember my first days with the Flamingo. I was shy, my shoes were old and dirty, and I was one of the only black players on the team. I said to myself, this isn't going to be easy. I'm going to have to work hard to make it. Soccer is a national obsession in Brazil. Every week, thousands of fans cram into Maracana Stadium in Rio and literally invade it with the colors and slogans of their favorite team. Today's match pits the red and black of the Flamengo against the white and black of Botafogo. Brazilians idolize their soccer heroes, and with good reason. The country has produced three World Cup winners and two of the world's greatest players, Pele and Zico. For Pinchino, it's perhaps a glimpse into the future. Three years ago at Maracana Stadium, the Flamengo held a huge event to honor their greatest superstar, Zico. The game was Zico's last as a soccer player, and all of Brazil was tuned to the big event. It was very exciting. That day I was at the stadium and there were over 90,000 fans screaming, Zico, Zico. I was really caught up in the event. I didn't know if I should scream or cry. It was a very special day. It was a big day for Pinchino as well. The Flamengo asked him to partake in official ceremonies following the game. Pinchino would receive Zico's soccer boots. Do Pintinho, claro, depois do Galinho, ele foi até utilizado de Pintinho, esteve até em Nápoles, pelo, pelas equipes interiores. O Flamengo, Nápoles, tentou contratar o um menino. A gente vai torcer pelo futuro desse garoto também, que seja um outro Zico. These are Zico's soccer boots. They're my most cherished trophy, and I'll never give them up. E vou guardar para sempre. Pinchino was born and raised in Cabusu, a poor countryside town located 40 kilometers outside Rio. His mother and grandmother still live here, along with his younger brother and sister. Although Pinchino spends most of his time with the Flamengo, he comes home on weekends. When Pinchino was 12, his father died from tuberculosis. His mom, however, has always been there to support him. I believe my son can make it. 
I expect him to work hard and to keep pushing until he gets there. Just because he's already achieved some success in soccer, it doesn't mean he'll make it in the future. One must always work hard to get ahead. That's what I've always told him. Without hard work, there is nothing. I expect a lot from Pinchino. In his hometown, Pinchino is considered a soccer star, the kid who draws a hero's welcome. Everyone here is hoping that I make it to the big leagues and become a star, or at least someone famous on TV. It's important for them. They'll say, we saw you on TV last week. People here really like that. I started playing soccer right here with my friends when I was a kid. It's important for me to come back and play with them now, even if I'm with the Flamengo. As a kid growing up in Cabusu, Pinchino spent more time on the soccer fields than he did in classrooms. In fact, he only started his education when he was 11. Before that, there were no schools here. Ah, aqui, aqui em Cabo Sul, né? A maioria das pessoas daqui são pobres. Quase todas. Most of the people here in Cabo Sul are poor, and a lot of them don't eat properly. On weekends, some families stay home rather than go to the beach because they don't have enough money for their next meal. Here in Cabo Sul, everyone plays soccer. It's cheap and it's the only thing to do. For Pinchino, soccer has opened the door to a bright future. But for many Brazilians, the future is less promising. Although Brazil boasts a modern economy and a large middle class, nearly half of its 120 million people live in poverty, and two out of every five people live in shanty towns. Here, drug gangs are popular among teenagers and employ up to 50% of the youth. One of Brazil's most disturbing social problems are its street kids, a generation of homeless teenagers who have come to the big cities from the countryside. There are over 20 million street kids in Brazil. That's one out of every three teenagers. Most of these kids have little faith in the future, and some will risk their lives for a cheap thrill. Despite these tough realities, soccer is still tops in the hearts and minds of Brazilians. Of course, that's before and after Carnaval, a week of musical madness when Samba and the poor are king of the streets.
This contrast between Brazil's rich and poor is very much a part of Pencino's own life. During the week, he lives here at the Flamengo's official team residence in a wealthy neighborhood of Rio. Often, I think about my life here in Rio and my life in Cabo and it makes me a bit sad. I have things here that I can't get in Cabo things that I'd like to give to my mother and my friends. It really bothers me that we don't have these things in Cabo For Pinchino, living at the residence also means adapting to a disciplined lifestyle. The players here are well-fed, well-rested, and kept out of trouble. The Flamengo also requires the players to continue their education. Pinchino attends classes five nights a week. There are lots of rules here that I have to follow. Getting up in the morning, meals, soccer practices, studies. Sometimes I feel like a prisoner and need to get out. When I can, I go shopping or surfing on the beach. At times, the pressure and discipline of a soccer career is difficult to handle, and often the distractions are tough to overlook. If I end up playing soccer, I'll be famous. In that way, all the girls will come after me. <laughs> yeah, but they'll only come because you're a star. I don't care. They'll be interested in my money, and they'll be interested in them. <laughs> Once I make it, I won't have to run after girls anymore. There's no challenge in that. I like hustling and cruising girls, working a little. Look who is talking. When you go back home, the girls are all over you. <laughs> That's what you think. I usually get 10 no's before I get a yes. At 16, Pinchino seems to have the world at his feet, and yet in reality, his problems are only starting. Halfway through his juvenile season, Pinchino has a dispute with his coach over discipline and is suspended from the team for a month. And just prior to that, he had other problems. The past few months have been really tough, and I've had all sorts of problems. I got injured twice, something that had never happened before. I sprayed my ankle, and after that, I cut my foot playing with friends in Cabo Su. I couldn't practice with the team for a whole month and I was on the sidelines for the first time in my career. I found that very difficult. A 
After three months on the sideline, Pincino finally rejoins his teammates and starts to get back in shape. In a few days, the team is playing in the National Juvenile Championships, the most important tournament of the year. Will Pincino make the starting lineup? Oh, bem, ó, qual a dificuldade de botar a bola dentro do gol? Bora, Marciano, rápido. Everyone knows that we have a very strong team. A player comes, another goes, and it hardly makes a difference. Even the best players are easily replaced. My injuries and the run-in with the coach are a big part of the game. It's something I have to deal with and will probably face again in the future. Being a soccer player isn't just a question of playing the game. On the way to the tournament, the team is pumped up and everyone's expectations are high. Pinchino hopes he gets a chance to prove himself again. Just prior to the game, Pincino finds out that he's not in the starting lineup. And as expected, the opposition is tough. Time, the Flamengo trails by a score of one to nothing. A defeat would mean an end to the season. Will Pincino get his chance? As the second half gets underway, the game intensifies. A Flamengo player is hurt, and Pincino is told to start warming up. Pinchino's chance never comes, and as the final minutes tick away, the Flamengo loses the big game. Despite his talent and promise, Pincino's juvenile season has been a tough one. In a one-on-one -on -one with his coach, Pincino is asked to think seriously about his soccer career. I know I have to make the most of my opportunities. There are thousands of Brazilian kids who dream of playing for the Flamengo and will never get the chance. I have to prove to everyone that I can do it. Making it to the big leagues is still my main goal, and I'm going to work even harder to get there. 
Although Pincino has already come a long way, he knows that young players like himself can end up on the sidelines, never making it as a professional. What does the future hold for Pincino? And where will he be 16 years from now? When I turn 32, my career as a soccer player will be nearly finished. I'll probably have two or three more seasons left. I'll be married by then and I'll have two kids. We'll live in a nice house and travel a lot. After my retirement, I'll come back to Cabo Sul and stay for good. <laughs>